Hi there, it's Jason Flaherty, and today I'm going to try something a little different with this. I'm going to tell you a little story. Uh, I've always imagined being able to tell a tale on a regular basis and share it on the internet with you. Well, recently I discovered a podcast by Mike Rowe called The Way I Heard It, where he kind of does the same type of format that I had always been interested in. It's a short little story, usually about a historical figure, and it takes uh, less than 10 minutes. Uh, you can find it on Google Play Music and iTunes in the podcast sections, and I'll link it below in the comments. If you like history and, and short little snippets of enjoyable stories, definitely give it a try and stick around to check this one out. But wait, I hear you say, this is a video, I can see you. That's not what a podcast is. Well, too right you are, Harry. The reason I'm doing it like this is because, well, quite frankly, I didn't want to wait any longer. I know how to make videos, and getting a podcast set up is a lot of work, and I want to make sure this format uh, works out well before I go to all that effort. And I want to make sure that's something that people enjoy. So that's the thing I am requesting from you, is that if you do enjoy this, please give it a like and share it. That way more people can see it, and I can find out if this is something worthwhile. And if there's anything you'd like to see changed, uh, leave a message in the comments and I will check those out as well. For now though, you can go ahead and put this video in the background or close your eyes because there is nothing for you to see. It's just going to be me reading this as if it were a podcast. In fact, I'm going to stop looking at the camera here. I figured for the first episode, I'd get us in the Christmas spirit with a short little five minute tale. So here we go with So the Story Goes. Once there was a young boy who was eight years old. He was a shepherd and was responsible for his family's flock of sheep. Every morning, he would wake up and say goodbye to his mother, who had already started on the day's sowing, and goodbye to his father, who was out feeding the cows, and he would take his flock of sheep up into the hills so they could graze. Day after day, he did this, and eventually the monotony became so boring that he would daydream about the stories he'd heard in town of kings and riches and traveling. The desire to do more with his life became so great that one morning he told his father that he was not going to take the sheep out. His father scolded him and reminded him of his responsibilities to the family. However, he loved his son and wanted to see him happy. The father being poor created a simple frame drum with a bit of scrap hide stretched across it. He gave it to his son to entertain him while he watched the sheep. The boy loved the drum. He played with it every day for two years. He became so good at it that he again started to dream of traveling from town to town with his drum in tow, playing for the people and earning enough money to maybe one day meet a king and to never have to watch sheep again. Perhaps it was fate, then, that one day a man passed along the road where the boy was watching the sheep. This man was dressed in colorful robes. He had several servants and animals with him. The man saw the boy and asked, How far along does this road continue on? The boy, amazed by the grandeur of this man, was speechless at first but soon came to his wits and replied that it was the main road to the village. The boy then asked if the man was a king because he looked so wealthy. The man chuckled and replied that he was not, but that he produced oils for anointing, which were very valuable. The boy looked forlorn and exclaimed, I'll never get to meet a king. The man laughed and told the boy that he was actually on the way right now to present his oils to a newborn king. He asked the boy if he would like to join him and go see the king himself. The boy took his sheep home and asked his father if he could leave with the man. Again, his father got angry, telling the boy that he had a responsibility to help his family. Who would care for the sheep if he left? Perhaps it was a twinkle in the boy's eye, but as the father looked into his son's face, 
his heart softened. He let his son leave to fulfill his dream. For days the man, the boy, and his servants walked. Days slowly gave way to months. Along the way, they met another man in the same business who was also on his way to bring his oils to the new king. On and on they traveled. The boy entertained them all by playing his drum every night and in every town they stopped in. Eventually, they met a third man who was laden with gold, also on his way to greet the king. For nearly two years they continued on westward, stopping to ask for directions as they went. Eventually they came to a town where a high-ranking official was in charge, who had self-appointed himself as king. The men thought that surely this important man, who lived so near the location they sought, must have already visited the new king. They visited the official who had not heard of this new king. He asked how they knew about him, but the three men were wise and didn't trust him. He pressed them harder and told them he would arrest them if they didn't tell. They said they had each seen a bright signal in the sky two years earlier and knew that a king was born. The official told them to find this new king and let him know where he was so that he could go and visit the king himself. The three men promised they would, but secretly planned to return home another way. On they searched with the boy in tow, until at last, in a small house, they found him, a two-year-old son of a carpenter named Jesus. The three men paid homage and presented their gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. The baby king did not seem happy by these cold, smelly gifts. He clung to his mother, staring at the strangers. The young boy, finally seeing a king, suddenly realized he had nothing to honor him with. He was too poor to buy anything. All he had with him was the simple drum his father had made for him. Feeling embarrassed, he stepped forward and timidly asked the child's mother if he could share the gift he had with the baby. The child's mother nodded. The young boy began to play. He played with all the skill he had developed after four years. The three men's pack animals, used to the drum by now, began to stomp and bray and added a certain rhythm to the drumming. The baby king was ecstatic over all this great noise and rhythm. He smiled and laughed, clapping his hands. Everyone within earshot came over to hear this amazing drumming. The young boy shared his gift with everyone who heard him that day, and everyone was richer for it. When he finally finished, everyone in attendance there clapped and thanked him. The king's family told him it was the best gift they'd ever had. The travelers from afar stayed for a few days to worship and honor the new king. However, eventually it was time to return home. The boy, having seen a king and gotten to play his drum across the country for thousands of people, decided he had had enough adventure and was ready to return to his family. They all departed, eager to return home. Finally, the young man, for he was now 14 years old, arrived at his home to his welcoming family. He happily took up shepherding again. He also played his drum in the village, where people came from all around to see his gift, a gift that was fit for a king. As of course you've realized, this was a long version of The Little Drummer Boy. A fictional song made famous in 1941 when Catherine K. Davis originally translated an old Czech carol called The Carol of the Drum. Over the years, it has developed classic status as a Christmas song, being sung by the likes of Bing Crosby, Andy Williams, Alicia Keys, and Josh Groban, to name a few. It was even the last song that Jimi Hendrix recorded before his death. It became so famous, in fact, that Catherine once joked that it had been done to death on radio and TV. However, still to this day, it still remains popular with its catchy pum pums and the inspiring message, 
to share our own gifts with those around us. Or so the story goes. Anyway, thanks for listening. Hope to see you again next time. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this audio story as much as I did making it, please give it a like or a thumbs up, and then subscribe to my page to make sure you don't miss out on any of the new stuff I'll be posting. And after you're done with that, I think you should definitely check out this video right here of the Christmas lights in Omaha, Nebraska. I think you're really going to enjoy it. Thanks.